Eric Tov, Chavri, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. It is not a good scene inside of Syria this evening. We hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it uh, just seems like nothing but bad news, only getting worse. The Iranian forces uh, certainly seem to be moving in position to get ready to, well, engage with the United States, British, and Jordanian forces, and no doubt maybe even the Saudi forces as well. That may come as a surprise to many of you that are watching this evening, but this is exactly what we're seeing looking at all different types of sources, including that of the LebaneseForces.com, their website here, uh, translated by Google here, Crowds and Warnings, What is Happening on the Syrian-Jordanian Border is the title of the article right here. In this article here, this article, by the way, is only three hours old. I actually caught it 43 minutes old. Uh, with a launch of military exercises conducted by the Kingdom of Jordan with the United States near the Syrian border, it launched a series of speculation about preparations for a military campaign in the south of Syria, accompanied by an exchange of statements between the Kingdom and the Assad regime as Iran has directed a number of militias toward the common border with Jordan and Iraq. Now that's what they have pictured on their site right here, on this map right here. This is Al-Tanf, or Al-Tanf is actually the way you pronounce it, Al-Tanf. I can't ever get that name just exactly right. I want to say Tanf instead of Tanf. But anyway, this, is, this here is Jordan, right in this area here. This is Iraq. And of course, this whole area is Syria and the different areas that are controlled by the different groups in those areas there. Now the United States, Britain, uh, the Norwegian troops, the Norwegian troops literally crossed the border right here to Al-Tanf uh, inside of Syria there with U.S. Uh, and Jordanian and Free Syrian Army forces all in this area right here and moving to this area now, I assume right here on the brown spot here are the Iranian Guard. Now we reported before that the U.S., when we were looking at uh, one particular article, now I've actually got that article on here now, but it is, uh, let's see, not there. Let me find the right one. Here we go. This is, I didn't use this when I was using a different uh, article at the time, but it was based off of this particular Middle Eastern article, generalbayi.com, where they were showing the huge amount of military equipment that was placed on the board and, border with Jordan, excuse me, with Syria on the Jordanian side there. This is British and U.S. military forces there. They've moved all of their equipment up there. And of course, this uh, aerial photo, no one seems to know who took the photo, but maybe perhaps the U.S. wanted to send a message to those fighting inside of Syria that they're getting ready to come across the line there. They better get ready for U.S.-led coalition uh, coming into this region there. Now, let's jump back here to this article right here, though. Uh, again, like I said, this is where they're talking about coming across as reinforcements. Iran has al-Assad and Iran's regime by moving their militias towards the Syrian border and Iraq Jordan, and, and Jordan. Accompanied by tanks, heavy equipment headed for these convoys to the town, the 7th Pierre Reuters quoted uh, Assam al Rais, a spokesman for the Southern Front, the Syrian Army Free, uh, Free Syrian Army, saying they had sent reinforcements, huge artillery, tanks, armored vehicles. The Free Syrian Army in the past two months was able to edit uh, large areas in the countryside of Damascus, uh, southeast Damascus in the countryside. So they're getting ready. They know that Damascus is the target. And this, friends, is only giving us more information. Although it is an Arabic news site, it is letting us know that they are anticipating an attack by the, uh, the U.S.-led coalition there on Damascus. And I think this has been a play from the beginning in order to draw Iran into the conflict. This only gives the U.S. an excuse to be able to take down the, uh, the Iranian uh, regime. And of course, this has been something that has been uh, a desire for Israel, being that uh, Iran and Israel have uh, traded back and forth uh, threats to one another, and, and it's been an ongoing issue for a long time now. So it, it seems to be at this point here, the stage is being set for Iran to be taken down, and there's no better way for the U.S. to be able to draw Iran into a conflict than to actually 
deal with them inside of Syria because Iran has vowed that they will fight for President Bashar al-Assad if there is any kind of invasion or any kind of attack by the U.S.-led forces on uh, President Bashar al-Assad's final stand there in Damascus. Now the question remains is whether or not Russia will actually try to stop the U.S.-led uh, attack. According to the agreement that Russia has with President Bashar al-Assad, he doesn't have an agreement to protect him, but he has stated in a statement, or at least not so much President Putin, but that of Prime Minister Med, uh, Medvedev, he has stated that another attack on the Syrian government will cause Russia to react, and as well as Iran, they will react together against any other attack. Now, let's look at some other things that are going on. Again, this was the, uh, the article that originally shows the U.S. forces on the border there, and of course, as we were sharing with you, let me just pull up Google Maps for you real quick, though, because I think that uh, uh, I need to kind of share with you some information here exactly where they are, what's going on in this region here, because there's a lot of movement uh, that is happening right there on the border. Now, we are now looking, we've got Damascus uh, right up here. This is Iraq, of course, Jordan, Amman, Jordan, Dada, Al Suwaid. This is the area here. Somewhere in this region here is where those that picture is, where you're seeing all the British and U.S. forces. They're staged here. All right. We also have on this road right here came across. This is where the Norwegian Special Forces crossed into Syria, meeting up with U.S. and British Special Forces along with the Free Syrian Army that has been trained to, to overthrow Bashar al-Assad. And as well, they were training on the Jordanian side. Now, remember, a little while back here, we reported how that they had brought in a big tanker. One went to Beirut, Lebanon, so that they could unload U.S. military equipment here. The other one went down through the Suez Canal, all the way down into the Red Sea, back up the Gulf of Aqaba, and unloaded in the port of Jordan. They moved all that equipment right up there to the border. That's why we see the picture of all this equipment up on the border now. And then, of course, as well, backing on out a little bit, we know that uh, the president was just recently in Riyadh, made that huge military deal, and that's something that's being discussed in the article as well, is about the military deal that's being made uh, by the president there with, with the Syrians. Now, this is the article here, turkishnews.com, Russian language. And just to kind of give you a little insight on what this article here is saying here, it says Trump bombs Syria, frightening Iran and Hezbollah. <clears throat> and no doubt for a good reason to frighten Hezbollah, uh, as well as the Iranians there, because like we just said, they're building up the militias on the border. All right. So at that, at the same time, uh, let me, before I go into that, just looking at the article there, um, no, we'll go ahead, we'll stick with the article, then I'll come back to it. Anyway, it says right here that uh, uh, Washington is supplying weapons to Arabian monarchies so that they can resist Tehran. Between the U.S. and Iran in the Middle East, an unofficial war flares up. It's already obvious that Iran is dissatisfied with the new military alliance between Washington and Riyadh. A few hours before the arrival of the President of the United States, Donald Trump in the capital of Saudi Arabia, the Hushites, uh, Hushites excuse me, supported by Tehran from the territory of Yemen, struck in Riyadh with a Burkan II ballistic missile of Iranian production. Now, the, according to, the, to Riyadh, they were claiming that the missile was shot down. But according to some of the local residents that were there that reported back to the news media there, it was not shot down. In fact, it scared, them, scared the daylights out of them because the missile actually made it into the Saudi territory and hit near the outskirts of Riyadh. All right, now that's what the article here is saying. Now, but they signed a record number of defense contracts. Washington and Riyadh declare in their joint declaration that they intend to strengthen the defense potential of the Arabian monarchy so that they can resist Iranian influence. And of course, that Iranian influence is right inside of Syria. And I can understand why this would trouble Israel to have Iran so close on their borders. And this is something that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu has been stating all along. And it's not just that. Let me show you something as well. This is something that really caught my attention. 
these two particular Israeli uh, news articles right here, uh, just quick briefs on this. This is a former Iranian uh, uh, defector living in Washington, and he talks about the positive relationship that Iran can have with Israel. Listen to this just for a second here. Now, something that really caught my attention that I wanted to share with you here is on Israeli I-24 news inside of Israel, the English language version there. They, the, the former or the exiled uh, crown prince of Iran, you can clearly see that the U.S. is getting ready for taking down Iran because watch what his statements are here. I want to first share with you a brief uh, clip of what he says about the recent elections there in Iran. Listen to this. I want to, to ask this. you first about the election we just saw. Hassan Rouhani was sort of described as an emerging voice of the opposition, at least relatively speaking. Were you encouraged by his victory? Yeah, first of all, let me analyze a little bit for you the, the dynamics of what has happened for years now in Iran. This, this kabuki dance, which is basically a charade when it comes to the meaning of elections, is nothing but some, uh, some attempt by the regime to try to prove its legitimacy, basing it on the participation of the people. Now, we have three categories of people. Those who do not vote simply because they don't want to legit... We don't have to go any further as far as how the voting system goes there because we can understand how it could be a, a, a facade. But th there's another one I want you to listen to as well that he states here. And this is what lets me know that the U.S. government is getting ready to can take envision... down getting ready to take down Iran because they've already got the, uh, the former uh, crown prince of Iran getting him ready and groomed to take back over power inside Iran just as soon as this country collapses. Listen to what this part of the interview says here. That changing in the future, that ta th those relationship? Mentioned uh, Israel briefly, I want to take you back in time. Uh, you are, of course, one of the people who will remember a very different reality when Iran had a much warmer relationship uh, than we see today with Israel. Can you envision that changing in the future, that ta th those relationship? Absolutely. Look, the best interests of democratic governments who are first and foremost caring about the betterment of life and the national interests of the country will have a foreign policy that is based on peace and cordial and brotherly relationship with our neighbors, Israel included, not to mention that we had a biblical relation since Cyrus the Great, as you mentioned. And let's understand one thing. It is a natural tendency of democracies to unite. Look at uh, Europe today with the European Union. Uh, so it's kind of interesting to see what we're seeing here with the former exiled uh, uh, the former, uh, excuse me, the, the prince uh, of Iran who is in exile right now, Pahlavi. And it, it's clear, very clear that what is happening is that they're getting ready to take down Iran. No, no questions asked. Now, I, I have to admit, I would much rather have this guy in, in Iranian power myself when it comes to cooperation with Israel, because he openly is saying that they would have a much better uh, unification of government. But then again, I also cannot help but think of a new world order, because the way he mentions about uh, how that the dem democracies, how they work together, and then he speaks about the European Union, look at the European Union, this almost looks like they're getting ready for a Middle Eastern Union but only after they destroy all the enemy. You got to kill all the races off, right? You know, there is a biblical side to that, which by the way, I'm going to be examining this uh, from, from a biblical perspective. I have known for a long time, Jordan is definitely going to be uh, under a major attack in the near future. It is biblically laying there, so I know it's coming. All right, so anyway, as we looked at this article right here, I want to take you also to another Russian article as well. Uh, this one right here is, um, is, does Russia seek to create an armed Syria militias near the borders of Jordan? Uh, and by the way, just the other day, we were sharing with you how that Russia had their own military there. They were showing the MI-35 uh, helicopter that Russia uses with the uh, landing gear that does not retract. Well, this here is the MI-24 with retractable landing gear that lets you know this is the Syrian version of the Russian helicopter uh, that is being used there. But in the article right here, again, it says, does Russia seek to create an armed Syria uh, militias near the borders of Jordan? Well, from what we're seeing in this article right here, uh, and this is by uh, inosme.ru, uh, 
they are writing in here that indeed Russia actually did try to create some militias, especially in the areas of, and we'll go back, zoom in on our map right here, in the areas of Dada and Az Suwaid. Both those regions there, according to local media reports, the Russian military actually visited those towns and tried to recruit militias to help protect from an advancement moving inside of that region there. This is what it states here. The article's local newspaper tells about a visit of a Russian military delegation to the city of Suwaid in southern Syria last week, during which Russia's side proposed the idea of creating military formations in this city. The uh, Suwaid 24 page in Facebook mentions that Russia's delegation held a meeting with, uh, with the residents of the city and also discussed the possibility of forming with the support of Russia military militias in order to protect the city from external threats. Moreover, the page provides information that Russian's delegation is ready to provide several lucrative offers for everyone who is ready to join the militias, for example, a monthly salary of $200. Okay, although the week has not passed since the visit of the page of Su uh, Su Suwaid 24, journalist Abu Ryan Ma uh, Marafi confirmed that the offer of Russia was not approved by the inhabitants of the province. Moreover, they categorically declared their unwillingness to accept such an idea. In fact, this group says that they have always been neutral in the war, although they have sided more so with Bashar al-Assad, uh, according to what the article states here, but they said too that the other, the, the one of the big troubling factors as well, though, is the presence of Iranian and Hezbollah forces in the region, which are both enemies of Israel. Uh, so we are really seeing a major shift right now with Iranian forces moving their militias on the border with uh, none other than the, uh, the, the going to the border there, right there with. Um, U.S., British, and Jordanian Free Syrian Army forces there, it is coming down to a showdown, and I can guarantee you one thing, the, 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 uh, the Iranian Guard will have, they will not be able to withstand the onslaught of the U.S.-led coalition, unless Russia were to step in. Now, the question remains, as we see Russia doing a little bit of negotiating with the local residents, is Russia going to get involved, or are they going to remain neutral in this particular onslaught? Uh, Iran clearly is showing the defiance. They will not be neutral. There have been articles coming out that Russia has moved forces there, including Russian forces deployed near Syria's border with Jordan. This is on South Front, uh, which they may have picked this up from our, uh, our latest report that we did on this just the other day. We know that South Front has journalists that do watch Israeli News Live. They've spoken with us before. And they note in here, we have no confirmation from Syria on this, but that is not unusual. Deployments uh, like this are usually leaked and not made official until some combat makes it obvious. It takes uh, some time for them to get into position and their size and makeup would be an indication of what uh, their mission would be. But they go on to note here, but today we hear not only that Russian Special ops are being deployed, but an armored unit and mountain brigade, if this is true, we have crossed the line uh, from Russian advisors to having regular Russian military formations now on combat. I don't think the Russians would be doing this unless the U.S. coalition also has such units already inside Syria and engaged, but not admitting it. Okay, so that's kind of interesting as well. And yes, we know this. Uh, we know the U.S. already has their own forces in there. We, we're aware of these things already. And of course, they're bringing out some information that we, I did not bring out. So no doubt they have some definitely inside sources that we're not aware of as well uh, either. So it goes on to say the, the Russians have played a conservative hand in Syria to protect themselves from being tagged as an aggressor. They wait for the U.S. coalition to escalate and then respond to the escalation. Moscow would have a strong hand in that case if the U.S. wanted to bring up a Russian aggression claim before the U.S. Security Council. Uh, anyway, VT is uh, watching this potential escalation very closely, including the looming battle for control of Syria-Iraq border, which will play a critical role during the anticipated political negotiations. Now, you know, again, the U.S. may actually use this particular moment to be able to carve out what they call safe zones inside of Syria. 
Uh, but it seems to me though, it won't be long until Damascus will be the very target itself. And at the same time, while we see all this going on as well, we also have another article that we saw that came out. Uh, this is on uh, Janawabia.com, an Arabic site, British uh, site reveals Jordanian special forces fighting in Syria secretly, they claim. This was March 25th, 2016. Now, actually, I didn't actually catch the date on that, so that's a, a year old. We already know that they're there according to the latest news that we've been going on, so we'll just drop that one all together there. But I did want to bring this out as well. This is something Lorenzo has put out on Already Happened. Spain ready to deploy military forces to Latvia. It is a huge military uh, group there that would be going. Uh, it says the Spanish army is deploying a heavy armored unit abroad for the first time as enhanced forward presence in the east of the alliance. Troops supported by Leopard tanks and uh, Pizarro armored vehicles will deploy from the beginning of June for six months. Around 300 troops have been deployed, 250 of which are from uh, Mechanized Infantry Brigade, uh, and et cetera, et cetera there. So, you know, we're constantly seeing troops move to Russia's border. And I have a feeling that m the main purpose for this is if in the event when a attack, an attack is launched inside of Syria, if Russia responds, then NATO must be ready on Russia's doorstep if they have to deal with Russia uh, trying to defend Bashar al-Assad. But there again, the question still remains, will Russia engage with the U.S. coalition or not? It's not part of their agreement with Syria, and that has been made known by the Russian government before. It is not their agreement with them, but Russia has stated that the U.S. coalition striking inside of Syria with Russian forces so close to the Syrian forces could spiral out of control because of this type of scenario. I'm Stephen Benoon. Sorry again to be a bearer of bad news, guys. I really am. I hate to see these type things going on. It's just more bloodshed, more war. But it will fulfill a lot of what um, the former uh, General Wesley Clark did say. Iran was also one of those targets. And I think that's about the last target on the list. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. At least by this weekend, we will take and bring you up to date from this from a biblical standpoint, especially when it comes to Jordan. Big issue there. And also some amazing discoveries I've been making and, the, and biblical things that I can't wait to share. Uh, I think they may air, air here on Israeli News Live as well, so be watching out for those things there. I'm Stephen Badoon, you're watching Israeli News Live, Arab Tov.